Hi, Coach. Hello. Yes, you got my name almost right. Oh, Shoyneman. Oh. Shoyneman. It's a very difficult name, I know. That's why I have a very simple first name. Timo. Exactly. Coach Timo. <laughs> Coach Timo, what are your thoughts about Indonesia's draw game uh, against Thailand last night? Yeah, it was, a, it was a great match to watch. Very enjoyable. Way better than the first game, obviously. Uh, but that's to be expected because uh, Thailand thought they had the the match already in the back, they're already champion, you know, so they they uh, took it down a notch a little bit, they played uh, some of their second string players, and that's a dangerous attitude to have as mm -hmm. we saw uh, last night, because Indonesia did come, come up strong, and uh, it could have uh, gone bad for Thailand, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, it's it's something that's human nature. You just talked about introvert, extrovert. I, I enjoyed it. But uh, <laughs> the point is, it's human it's human nature to uh, let your guard down. And in football, uh, it's never a good idea, you know. And which which is why uh, in in football, when you're leading one zero up, no problem. You're still cautious. You're confident, but you're cautious. You know, good balance. But then when you're leading two zero, it's the worst lead to have because mm -hmm. you're starting to let your guard down and that's that's what happened to Thailand uh, last night mm -hmm. and Indonesia took full advantage of that and uh, it just it was enjoyable even though we didn't uh, win but uh, I just enjoyed the match way way better than the first one all right coach now let's talk about the players okay what is your th thoughts on the composition of players for the Indonesian national team who are still uh, 23 years old in average. Yeah, overall, uh, good prospect, I must say. Um, uh, for sure for SEA Games and for AFF, which is going to come up at the end of this year. Um, with largely the same group of uh, players. So that prospect, that side of prospect, short-term prospect is very good. Long-term pro prospect, Big question mark because mm. we we've had it over and over again where players have shown great prospect and then just uh, just didn't deliver you know and so it comes down to uh, the situation in each club uh, the situation with uh, each player their careers and their attitude towards ever getting better um, are they going to fall into the trap of yeah i'm now a national team player i can kind of let the guard down uh as you can do as a team you can do also as a as a as an individual with your career and that's that's never a good thing and that has happened so often in the past so long term big question mark short term uh definitely great prospect mm -hmm. Right, so Coach Timo, let's talk about uh, the player. If you have any highlight of uh, some players, for, for example, maybe you have the opinion about the play of uh, Pratama Arhans in the last uh, final, or maybe what do you think about Egi Maulana's involvement during the semi semi-final? Does this affect yeah. the team? Yeah, Arhan is uh, voted the best uh, youngster in the, of the tournament, which is which is great. Uh, he has great attitude. I followed him. He's 20 now. I followed him since he was 15. Uh, his mentor, his coach, is uh, a good friend of mine. So I I knew he was going to be a player a long time ago, uh, and so I'm 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 happy that he's going through a really good process. Eggy too. Uh, this is his second season now in Eastern Europe, and he's doing way better. So he's maturing, but. It's very, very dangerous to put a player on a pedestal. Um, Indonesia is such a big country with so much media. Mm -hmm. And it has happened so many times that if someone is sort of good, the media makes it to be amazingly good. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's counter it is counterproductive because it destroys the career of the person uh, because he's letting his guard down, like I talked about before. And two, uh, it's just, um, it's not good for the team, you know, because you, you don't want stars in the team and thinking they're stars and then acting out, which is the best thing about uh, Sin Tao Yang, in my opinion, uh, that he's created a team that is low profile, working hard, that shouldn't be changed. No one should be put on a pedestal and be treated as a star because no one is that good, actually. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, we you know uh, in my opinion there's simply no Messi in Indonesian football so mm. no one deserved to be treated as a as a huge star it's counterproductive to the player's career and it's counterproductive to the Indonesian team as a whole Okay, Coach, you mentioned earlier about Coach Shin Tae-yong. Now, he is the talk of the town, obviously, especially after uh, last match. How much does the coach contribute to bring the team to the final and earn the runner-up title? How big of a, of a, of a, a play, I mean, for the coach? Okay, when you, when you evaluate a team's chance in a tournament, first, the first thing you look at is how good is your team? And part of how good is your team is your your coach the quality of coach and then you look at opponents mm -hmm. you know a lot of a lot of people don't do that they just look at their own team and they say oh it's awesome but then they they don't see that other teams are actually practicing too you know what i mean mm -hmm. so you have to look at other teams and then number three a lot of people forget that is the road to the final which is why in the beginning I didn't think Indonesia would make it to the uh, final. Mm. I would think Indonesia make it to the semi-final, but not to the final because the road to the final would meet them with Thailand on paper. It should mm -hmm. be Vietnam and Indonesia in the group, you know, so they should meet Thailand in the semi-finals and then uh, lose in the semi-finals simply because Thailand is just way, way better uh, than Indonesia at the moment. So. Uh, the road to the final showed that Indonesia, Indonesia on paper at least, wouldn't make it to the final. So <laughs> this is this is obviously a great accomplishment. Even though I know most most people are uh, not happy, you know, they wanted to have the title. But you know, yeah. second place is second place. Second place is not fifth. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Second place is not not last. You know, so you got to give credit where credit is due, and especially since uh, on paper they sh shouldn't even enter the final right you know. and uh, an interview with coach Timo wouldn't be complete without a prediction obviously <laughs> so let me just ask you what is your prediction for next year's AFF tournament what do you think will Shin Taeyong keep his young players or do you think that um, there should be more senior players involved in the team yeah, I, you know, I, there's some questions, of course. Uh, overall, like I said, Shin Taoyang has done a good job uh, boosting the energy of the team, the, uh, the, the confidence level, the uh, um, motivation level, working hard and, and stamina and not, you know, uh, just very careful not to let players feel like they're a star. That's, that's all positive things, you know, but he's still learning about um, which players are the best in Indonesia? You know, you just you just can't do that uh, that fast. So, to me, Dedi uh, shouldn't be on the national team. Uh, Rido on Ruma Kiek is just too. They're too soon. It's not like they're bad, but they're they're too soon to be playing in the uh, national team. Uh, you know, senior national team. Under 23, yes, but. Uh, uh, for the national team, no. Rumakiak, by the way, is like Ruma Ropen. Any name like that comes from Biak, by the way. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I do a lot of scouting, so I know these these names. Oh, you must be coming from that uh, from that region. But anyways, a while Valian also. Uh, to me, no, it's definitely not a number nine. We need a number nine. Uh, to me, uh, Valian maybe plays as a as a ten position, offensive mid, but big maybe. Um, I just don't think he has um, he's good technically but I don't think he has uh, something special to, to bring to the team so not a big fan of uh, of him good good guy I suppose but just just not a fan of him and that shows a problem in the Indonesian league Indonesian national team we don't have a number 10 really mm -hmm. and a number nine so to me number nine prospect is Bagus Kafi he's, he's mm -hmm. still in the making uh, I'm really hoping he would he would just skyrocket in the future for and for now Spaso so I I was hoping these two guys would have been in the team definitely Spaso you know so uh, um, that's those are the players that I would bring in uh, for defensive mid um, and center back we still need some you know uh, players from abroad maybe so Jordi Ahmad and Sandy Walsh should be quality they you know they seem quality at least i have to first really watch them how they 
connect with the Indonesian team because, you know, in Europe, on CV, they're amazing, but can mm. they connect with Indonesian football as it is, you know? So, um, but those are great prospects to me. It just shows the league needs to take care more of number 10 and number nine. So to me, only four foreigners would be a good idea to me and only let three play All because right. then you don't flood the number nine with foreign players. You don't flood the number 10 with fo foreign players and you don't flood the center back with foreign players. You always leave, you know, room for Indonesian no players to grow. Oh. Okay. Wow. All right. Wow. Okay, Coach Timo, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Please stay safe and have a great day. Thank you. Thanks for Thank having you. me.